After many years of serving the Lord in his vineyard, he earned the title of a reverend in the Cameroon Baptist Convention. He is from a family of five and second in number. He is married to a very beautiful lady who is commonly called Mother Stella. They have five children, four girls, one boy. He is a master holder in missiology and has his passion church planted. Today in my calling, we'll be hosting none other person than our Reverend Sir Clarence Zitonin. As I said, we are having a very great missionary, a person that has a passion, church planting. He is Reverend Sir Clarence that is sitting right beside me and we're going to turn over to him to get his impression. Of course, you know how he's feeling today. Good morning, Reverend. Good morning, Vanessa. <laughs> We're so excited to have you in my calling. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Thank you very much for accepting to host us. So, Reverend, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine by the grace of God. Mm, yeah. Really? Yeah. And I hope you won't uh, uh, be somehow timid to share your calling with us. <laughs> oh, it's always a pleasure for me to share my calling. Yeah. Not just you, but the rest of the world. And that's why we're here to get the world know how, what it means, the joy involved in this ministry. Thank you very much. All right. So, Reverend, we're going to start with our first question that we ask everybody. How did you know you were called to be a pastor? Um, thank you, Vanessa. It's a very pertinent question, and it's also a very sensitive question. Uh, um, it's an old story, very long story. Uh, uh, my calling came, first and foremost, uh, to, as, as, as a child of God. Mm -hmm. my first, the first part of my calling was a call to be, to be born again. That was some, some years back in the 1990s. When I surrendered my life to Christ, wow! And uh, I became more and more involved in uh, Christian activities. That was in the sibling resource. Wow! That means you are still very young. I was still very young, yeah, very very young. And so uh, I began by sharing the word of God. I started preaching the, the good news of salvation to my friends, and and that continued until um, uh, I later on went to Mbengui, GBHS Mbengui, where I became involved again in a, another Christian club, known as the Student Christian Movement. And during that period, uh, um, I became more and more involved in uh, Christian activities. It's during that period that, because of my passion, uh, many people began to call me pastor, and many people began, to, began feeling that I was, I was calling to the pastoral ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, more to that, uh, uh, around Lower Seat, I started receiving a lot of dreams on how I was preaching the word of God wow. to many, many people, and they were giving their life to Christ. And, uh, and I started thinking that that could, be, that could be where God is leading me to. You know, at that time, I was still very young and very, very enthusiastic and very, very ambitious. Exactly, because I was driving to that. It was like you were just dreaming all about the ministry. You also had other dreams. Yeah, I was actually planning to become a medical doctor. Okay. And that's why I studied sciences at, uh, in the secondary, secondary and high school. And, uh, but God called me. When, when, I, when I started sensing that it was God, God's call, I felt that maybe I could be deceiving myself. I had to talk to some elders uh, who equally confirmed the call of God in my life. Wow. And, um, and that is how I, it became established in my heart that I was being called by God to serve a full-time pastor. Wow. So. And how did your parents take this? Because back then we hear a lot of people talking about their parents rejecting. Like, oh, after all the money I've invested in you, you want to become a pastor. How did your parents take this? Yeah, it was a very challenging period, moment for my life, my, especially my father did not accept that kind of a thing. He says he, he was dreaming of a medical doctor. He, you know, I was very good in sciences and uh, uh, my father wanted to see me. He wanted to have a medical doctor in the house. Exactly. So uh, when I started talking to him about being called as a, a pastor, he thought I was foolish. He thought I was mad. Mm -hmm. He told me that I was crazy. That how could I be? Uh, I'll be so intelligent in school and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm talking about being a pastor. The pastor, the pastor was, ministry was some frustrated people. people. <laughs> And you know, at that time, in the 1990s, <laughs> when you saw a pastor's umbrella, you know that it is a pastor's umbrella. Exactly. When you saw a pastor's suit, you know that it is a pastor's suit. It was suit. a coat. Uh, yeah, it was really? a coat, not a suit, actually. <laughs> so so uh, it, was, it was really intimidating and very frustrating for a young man, very ambitious, doing well in school, to be talking about being called to be a pastor. So uh, I myself, I, I was almost rejecting the call myself because, yeah. because I could not put the two together. I mean, putting, the, putting what I was seeing and what I was going in for, going into, it was not, it was not, it was not, it was not, it was not really making sense to me. Uh, yeah, particularly. But I had that strong conviction within me 
that God was actually calling me to, to serve him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you decided to, to give in to the will of God, you just left your studies and started the uh, Bible school, or did you do any, some pastors just wake up today and declare the pastors without going through any particular training? Was that the same case with you? I didn't just, although I received the call when I was in lower seat, I, the elders advised me to, to continue my studies. So I went right to university. It was at the university level that I was, that I became more and more convinced that it was time for me to, 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 to go get into, to, to, to into full-time ministry. Yeah. And I remember I, even during that period, I was still thinking that it was not your time. Mm -hmm. Of course, I remember I was planning to go and do pharmaceutical studies in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I made a stop in Bafusam. And during that period, I became involved in a ministry. Many of, things happened. Yeah, many things happened. I became involved in the ministry of a church planter. Okay. Yeah, working with the, we were serving under the Cameroon Baptist Convention, under the supervision of the North American Baptist okay. Conference. So I went to that church and... And he also discovered all these talents in me, and uh, he, he confirmed the call of God in my life. And he just told me that instead of going to study pharmaceutical, to do pharmaceutical studies, and then wasting time and coming back, I just involved. I just get myself involved in theological studies, which is which was very very important for me. Um, yeah, I knew that I was just passing time to eventually go and do my exactly. my studies. Uh, but uh, the, the the punch on my forehead came when when a, a missionary conference was organized. Okay. Yeah, when it was organized and, and uh, there was a call, during that missionary conference, there was a call for, for, for young people to commit themselves into the service of God, and uh, especially those who were really sensing the call. And uh, I, I was one of, I'm one of those who decided to actually commit myself into wow. during that period. I remember I, after doing that, I came back home and I thought again, did I did it really do the right thing at the right time? <laughs> and I remember crying until tears were flooding the floor because I knew that it was going to be painful. I remember crying, I remember tears on the floor in a room in Bafusam, in one little room. And so uh, that is when, that was in 2001, that's when I actually committed myself to enter into full-time ministry. And then I began my training. I didn't just say, okay, the Holy Spirit has called me, I'm going to a community. I decided to, to, to be trained. I, was, I came to Fatek. Okay. And uh, during that period, I was also going to, one, uh, to the Baptist seminary in Du mm -hmm. and doing some summer courses. And, the, and the, 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 the missionary himself was also training me in some courses. So I started developing a very strong theological foundation wow. right from that very beginning. Okay. I later on went to, to seminary again, sometimes in 2006. Wow. Yeah, 2000. All those schools. Why all those schools? You could still do just one and go into the ministry. Yeah, the Bible says, learn to make yourself a watchman who needs not to be ashamed, wow. but rightly yeah. dividing the word of truth. Okay. You know, it was important. I, th I thought it was important for me to actually uh, study hard. Yeah, study all the intricacies, all the theological issues, so that I can be able to rightly handle the word of truth. You see, I, that's why I went to seminary in Kumba, and I, I did my studies in Bachelor's of Art. In, I had a degree. Wow, that's very impressive. And now you came out as a pastor, certified pastor, and decided to work with the Cameroon Baptist Convention, yeah. not creating your own ministry. Yeah. Why? Uh, that is, uh, that is, that is, that is that's a very serious question. <laughs> I became born again in the context of the Cameroon Baptist Convention. Okay. Yeah, and I think that God called me in that context on purpose, for a purpose. Okay. And I knew that I needed to serve God under that purpose in order to be, in order to, I needed to, to accomplish God's purpose in that context. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about, uh, <laughs> but that's a personal opinion. Yes. I'm a little bit skeptical about uh, personal, personal ministry, especially at that particular level, at that particular time. And that is why I needed a context that was an existing context yes. yeah, uh, through which I could exercise my ministry. And by the way, I'm a son of the Cameroon Baptist Convention. Mm -hmm. And so I just needed to serve God in that, yeah. in that family, in that bigger family. Is it like Cameroon Baptist Convention has something different, outstanding from other ministries? The Cameroon Baptist Convention is a denomination mm -hmm. and uh, with its own distinctives and its own values and beliefs. And, and uh, uh, there might be slight differences but I don't think the differences are so much. I think the differences are, have to do much, much with practices that go on. But I think those kind of differences should not tear us apart. In fact, they show the diversity that is involved, that is in God, and that we should embrace and work together as people of God, of the kingdom of God. Wow. When we're talking about your profile, I did mention that you are a passionate church planter. Mm. Now, why? Why this word church planting? That's what I'm really curious. You know, it's like you just go to one place and just 
group people and start off something and you leave? That's what I want to know. When I met a missionary I talked to you about, uh, he's a very good brother. He's a, he mentored me in, uh, in church planting. In fact, the first thing I did as a, as a pastor was beginning a church. Mm -hmm. and, and as years passed by, I understood that that was really uh, what God is calling us to do mm -hmm. because the kingdom of God has to expand exactly. somehow. And the kingdom of, of God cannot expand if churches are not being planted. Exactly, if we okay. sit in one place. Yeah, if you, you know, that's in Jeru you know, the church was in Jerusalem and it needed even persecution yeah. for the church to break out exactly. and to be planted in Samaria and, and, in, different, and in different areas of the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, I decided to join God in what he is already doing to expand the kingdom of God to the rest of the world. And that's why I've been I'm so passionate about starting new churches where churches do not exist. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think this man really had a great impact. Can yeah, we say he was your mentor? Yeah, he was my mentor, Reverend Dale Hofnagel. Uh -huh. We were together for more than six years in Bafusam. And, and he is uh, still? He is still alive. He's in Canada, and I'm saying hello to him. Oh, yeah. that's cute to see that your son has grown up to this level. You do the, 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 the planting and you leave it. Yeah, I don't. In fact, I've stayed highest in the church just for five years. And that was the church I, I planted in, in Hawaii, Scalia, in Missions, that's wow. Mission Baptist Church. That was, the church that's, that was the only church I stayed longest inside. But the other ones have been working together, other churches to plant them. And, uh, and I'm presently uh, uh, planting a church, mm -hmm. in the process of planting a church. And I'm already about to leave the church because another pastor is coming in to take over. Wow, that's great. I was like talking with my colleague the other day that some people are so good in planting churches, doing the great, the hardest job and others just come and eat. And I'm like, is this, is it that God called some people to plant churches and others to come and harvest? Well, uh, Sorry, that's just an aside. Well, uh, <laughs> to say that others come and eat might be another statement because uh, we have different, 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 different uh, callings. Uh, there are people as, uh, who are good in planting, and there are, people who are, there are people who are good in raising up the churches exactly. and growing the churches. Yeah. And if I want to grow the church, I might end up destroying the church. Exactly. So, that's, uh, that's... so it's important for me to do that which I need to do, mm -hmm. and the other people come and do what they need to do. Okay. God has ways of blessing <laughs> me. I think if there is a pastor that has been blessed in the Cameroon Baptist Convention, I think I'm one of those pastors wow. who have been blessed. Although I've been starting little, little churches, yeah. I think God has blessed me in extraordinary ways. Amen, mm. amen. Yeah. I just hope the Cameroon Baptist people are watching this program to really see the impact they've created in this man of God's yeah. life. Thank God for Joseph Merrick and the others that came. Those are the first Baptist yeah, missionaries. Yeah, sure, for sure. Yes, yeah, John yeah, Apreseka, Joseph, Joseph Merrick. Yeah, those, yes. are the, those are our <laughs> forefathers who started the work yes. in Cameroon, and we are thankful to them that Very they did thankful. such a marvelous job. All right. And so, they were moving on with the baton amen. that they gave to us. Amen, mm. amen. We'd like to know some challenges, those setbacks you've been experiencing in the ministry okay. so far. Um, you know, when you talk about setbacks, it's a bit difficult because I've had a catalog of setbacks. Wow. And my, setback, my setbacks began right when I started uh, the ministry of church planting in the Western region. Okay. Yeah, I remember I had no support. Uh, I was being given a, a, a stipend of 5000 per month. Really? By the church that was sending me. Can you imagine? You can imagine that. And... Uh, it was quite a tough time for me, and uh, I remember I used to go for ministry, and I would sleep on bamboo beds, wow. and uh, in a touch in touch houses, and in the night cockroaches would come out. You know this kind of this kind of village cockroaches that can fly. Yes. And I would spend time beating them and struggling with wrestling with cockroaches, but I was doing the work of God with passion, Amen. and with commitment. I don't. I I will even confess that the commitment I had at that time. I don't think I have that kind of commitment. The commitment again. Oh. Yeah. Because it was really it was really serious and. and Good have to get yeah, a total so, of five thousand. Yeah. So I, I but I kept going and the, the Lord kept sustaining me even during that period, and so uh, that that has uh, that is it. And so those are some of the challenges. One of the challenges that some of the challenges have been at the level of financing the church new the new church plant that have been that have been starting. Sometimes uh, we don't have. Because in the Cameroon Baptist Convention, we have what is called mother churches. Mm -hmm. And sometimes churches that are, that are around mm -hmm. where you want to plant a church are not ready, you know, to, uh, to, to, to mother the churches that are being planted. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the normal uh, process is that it's a church that plants a church. Mm -hmm. And no, sometimes no. the churches are not ready to, to do the church plant because of one project or the other. Mm -hmm. Or maybe because of misplaced of priorities. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have to struggle alone, like the one we just, uh, we just planted of recent. You have to struggle alone. You have to look for resources here and there, put resources to see what you do in order to be able to, 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 to get the church, to kick, to, to, to kick start the church. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the problem is, you know, when you are starting a church, there are three 
in, in French, we call them la, la triple autonomy. Wow. The triple autonomy. Tell us about it. Uh, the, 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 we believe in the Cameroon Baptist Convention. We believe in the autonomy of the local church. Okay. We believe in the financial autonomy of the church. We believe in the, uh, the, the governing authority of the church. And we believe in the multiplication of the, government, of the autonomy of the church. In other words, the church is supposed to be financially autonomy, autonomous. Yeah. yeah, and the church is supposed to govern itself autonom autonomously. Mm -hmm. And the church is supposed to propagate itself autonomously. And sometimes it becomes difficult to be maybe either to gain financial autonomy yes, uh, because you are starting a church with people who do not know what it means to give. Yes, yeah. And sometimes it's difficult to, 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 get to, to, to have uh, governing autonomy because you have to spend years training leaders, yes, uh, building leaders, people who, who are coming from everywhere, nowhere, <laughs> and you have to start all about them in, through, through the process of discipleship. Mm -hmm. And, so, and so, so those are some of the challenges. And to, so to be able to establish a church sometimes is very, very challenging because you have all of these uh, these dynamics yeah. this church planting dynamics that work together you know for you to be able to be able to get the church to, to give the minimal push yeah. for the church to be able to get on to get going so wow yeah. so talking about these churches you've planted so far you spoke of nine can you boast of some still existing here today um all the churches are existing wow and they are all uh, this they are is all, great they are all having pastors and these churches, I think, are contributing seriously in the life of the Cameroon Baptist Convention. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, talking about contributing greatly to the lives and impacting people around you, we see that Reverend Sir Clarence has done a lot in his calling. We're going to get some two people that will be giving us some brief testimonies on what the God has used this great man of God to do in their lives. We'll be right back. Je deviens de Kribi lorsque j'ai connu le ministère du pasteur Clarence. Et déjà, je peux dire qu'il y, y a eu beaucoup de changements dans l'aspect familial, organisationnel et aussi relationnel dans ce que nous avons eu à faire. Parce que l'enseignement beaucoup plus a été différent de, dans d'autres milieux que j'ai fréquentés. Et aussi... Le plus grand impact que je veux souligner, c'est qu'il y a eu un rassemblement familial parce que même ma famille se retrouvait réunie, jointe maintenant à Christ. Au point où c'est un impact vraiment très particulier que je souligne. I'm around Kolanga here for close to three years now. And uh, actually, my life as a Christian was dying. I never even had a church around that I could worship in. And uh, I once got an information from a sister and a mother that Reverend Sir Clarence has opened a cell here, a worship center where we could commune together as Christians. So for the time being I encountered him, there has been some sort of reawakening in my Christian life because staying here without worshiping, without fellowshipping together with Christians, it made that aspect of worshiping, that cohesion that comes between Christians, that part of it was dying. And uh, part of the things I learned in my early years when I was growing up, I actually had forgotten about those things. So knowing him, I'm sure that it has come to bring some sort of reawakening and it is reviving my Christian race and it is trying to build me to be more firm and stronger despite the challenging moments that we face as Christians in the world, despite the things that we as individuals we encounter in life that attack even our own Christian beliefs. We think that, I personally, I think that uh, meeting Reverend Sir Clarence has been a blessing. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Mike Colleen, and we are with Reverend Pastor Sir Clarence. He is our guest today. We've been having a great time with him. I would like to remind everybody that's just joining us, or those that were already there, that Reverend Sir Clarence is a Reverend Pastor in the Cameron Baptist Convention, and today he has decided to grant us the opportunity to hear more about the call of God in his life. So, Reverend, we've just watched those two people testify the impact of your church planting ministry in their lives. And today I would like to ask, do you think, if we don't know, I always ask this question, if God takes you to glory today, do you think this, uh, these churches you've planted will continue to exist, will last? The interesting thing about the churches I've been planting is that I'm not planting my churches. Mm. I'm planting the churches of Christ. Mm. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against that church. You see, so when I'm involved in a church plant, I make sure that the church is not centered on me, 
Yeah, it is centered on the body of Christ. Amen. In such a way that even if I'm not there at any time, T, the church will keep going. And more to that, I am doing church planting in the context of a denomination. Mm -hmm. And that denomination also makes sure that the church, there's some continuity. And so that's why whenever I plant the church, I make sure that there is a pastor mm -hmm. in that church before I just give up, before I leave, I leave the church plant. To, to continue, yeah. All right, thank you very much. That's very important. I'm calling on all those young uh, pastors these days that are watching us. If you're watching us and you're aspiring to become a pastor, know that the church you're building is not your church, it's the church of Christ. So depend on God for everything and he's going to see you through. Reverend, we're going to talk about uh, your ministry still. Do you think, uh, do you think there's some things you would have done from the start that you never did? that you could still do now to make the ministry more b wonderful? For sure, for sure. Um, when, I was, when I went in for my um, degree program, mm -hmm. I, uh, I wrote my thesis on uh, cell home cell ministry, yes. yeah, the greatest need of the 21st century church. I still remember that topic very well. And um, I, I came back, when I came to church, I, my dream was to establish a home, home cell church a church that is based on home cell ministries. Um, I had a very good intention, but I didn't really know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and the, the, the not knowing how, how to do with developing and training home cell leaders mm -hmm. who could lead these cell groups. Because the secret of uh, the success of, uh, of cell, lead, cell, or cell, cell groups is based on the type of the leaders, leaders leading those cell groups. Wow. And so uh, I just thought that maybe because of maturity or because of spiritual maturity, and uh, every person could be able to lead the cell group. So I just picked these people here and there. And uh, they, intend, they, they, they actually they basically suffocated those cell groups, wow. and they didn't work out the way I thought they should have worked out. I even went to South Korea and, and, and attended some cell groups in Yonggi Cho's ministry, wow. Yoido Full Gospel Church. I attended a good, a good number of cell groups, home cell groups, and I saw how beautiful it was working. And so I was pregnant with this vision, vision yeah. to impact the community <laughs> and uh, but I, I didn't really think seriously about them um, about the the people i was the team i was supposed to be to working work with, with yeah, yeah to cause this to happen and i'm thinking that if i have an opportunity by the grace of god i'm thinking about you this you have a long uh, life yeah, ahead of oh, you oh thank you very much <laughs> Vanessa, for that i'm still praying and dreaming that uh, praying that the lord will give me an opportunity so that i can be able to to begin by really training cell leaders developing cell leaders who can who can, who can carry the vision and run with it further than I could ever think. So uh, I think if I had to fix things, I'm going to fix things at the level of developing yeah, cell leaders who understand the dynamics of cell groups. So, man of God, we're going to talk about something that I, I like asking each time I go out because we are living in Cameroon, we're Cameroonians, and we have some serious segmentation crisis with denominations mm. you know every church is trying to prove that he or she is the best mm. as a pastor of the Cameroon Baptist Convention what are you doing to solve this problem I see denominations the way I see church mm -hmm. the church is a body of Christ yes, right. and the body has different parts mm -hmm. that work together for the good of the church mm -hmm. we're talking about the segregation or the splitting of the universal church mm -hmm. the universal body of Christ mm -hmm. which is an unfortunate situation I think uh, 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 there are some certain things which are inessential to the faith, mm -hmm. which we can, we can compromise. But there are some certain things which are very, very essential to the faith, which we cannot compromise. Mm -hmm. In those things, we, we have to be united. Mm -hmm. okay? In other inessential things, we can go away and do whatever we want to do, but we should not allow inessential things to tear the body of Christ apart. Mm -hmm. We are called upon to build God's kingdom here on earth, and we must work together hand in glove mm -hmm. to see that that work is accomplished. For us to be ministers is just a privilege. We, God can do what he wants to do without us. Exactly. Okay, but, but God has decided to choose us to work together to see into it that we, we move along. We work in building his kingdom. Unfortunately, we have destroyed the body of Christ because we are basically destroyed because there are many other canal or on Christian organizations that even unite more than Christian, Christianity, exactly. which is really, really unfortunate. So I'm really calling on the church to think of how we can we can come together, not fuse into form one denomination, but come together with our diversities and working together as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the church will call in on you. Let's come together. Let's stop 
backbiting, let's stop fighting one another and build up a strong and solid body of Christ. Amen. So, Reverend, we've come, we're going closer to the end of our program and we'd like you to talk to these youths. You know, youths always have this burning zeal, especially when you just give your life to Christ and you're like, Father, que le zèle de ta maison me dévore, you know, like the Frenchman would say it. They just want to go into full-time ministry and start churches and all. What word of advice can you give them? Somebody once said, charisma minus character mm. is equal to caricature. Wow. Let me bring it to the context of our, of our theological training. Okay. okay. Charisma minus theological training mm -hmm. is equally equal to caricature. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of havoc that has been caused in, uh, in Christianity today because people don't want to, to humble themselves to be trained. Mm -hmm. I think theological th training is very, very important. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people say, let's put theology aside. How can you put theology? Theology means the science of God. Exactly. You cannot put God away, God aside, and then you are doing God again. Yeah. And so uh, theology has to do with learning the things that, in, that are involved in, that, that concern God and that are involved in the ministry. And so I would just want to encourage young people to calm down, please, when you are called, it is good, but you need to be equipped mm -hmm. to be able to exercise your calling adequately. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself and be trained, and God is going to lift you up in due time. Amen. On this one, humility precedes de la gloire. So if you want to have the glory of God, learn to be humble. So, Reverend, the last word to our viewers. I equally want to, to say hello to all the pastors across denominational lines, and more particularly to uh, Cameroon Baptist Convention pastor. I want to say hello to my association pastor, Reverend Samari, and to the executive president of the Cameroon Baptist Convention, Reverend Diteme Shalomain, and to the minister's fellowship, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Wemgong Samuel, and all the Reverend pastors and all the pastors. God bless you and God strengthen you. Thank you very much, Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. Our glorious viewers who've come to the end of my calling this day, we were accompanied by Reverend Zach Lawrence. As you can see, you have his contact if you want to call him. You can do so if you have anything to seek for advice on. But let us be spiritual, please. <laughs> we don't give contacts here for people to call for other things. Let it be spiritual. So our beautiful viewers, that was it. Reverend said, go for theological training. So if you are aspiring to become a minister of the word, don't go and preach heresies to people. Sit down and learn before you can give out that word to people you cannot give out what you don't have you only give out what you have so if you have heresies you give out heresies but you have the true word of god you give out the true word of god the baptist people always like to say we are people of the word so if you want to be someone of the word go and get yourself trained so thank you very much reverend for this wonderful opportunity thank you very much our beautiful viewers for watching